sprinkle some barbecue sauce on my cock, and then the chick, she's like, come here, like, <laughs> like baiting like a, yeah. a mouse with peanut butter. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I'm here with my main wing woman and rotation girl, uh, Jessica Rabbit is how we're gonna refer to her. For those of you that have seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it is the tall redhead with big boobs. She's like, can we film naked? And I like turn around and I was like, I don't know what we can do on YouTube. I was just about to like lift her boobs up. I don't think that's allowed either. I was just showing my, my buddy uh, Alex from Playing With Fire, like almost every single one of my videos is like demonetized or limited monetization, even after manual reviews. And I'm not talking about that crazy of shit in all of them. Although I did talk about my grandfather's cock in the How To Last Songer in Sexual Positions. Anyways, today we're gonna to talk about uh, another threesome we had last night. I think this is our fifth new girl here together. Uh, she's done night game polls with me before social distancing. She also had a day game poll that was successful with me. Um, she's been on some of my other videos before. Uh, but yeah, just before we get into the details of that, please like and subscribe. Uh, new videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but yeah, I'll let her kind of, well actually no, I'll, I'll tell from, from my side and then let her start talking about some of the, the technical details. So a lot of guys, I get this question all the time, my mastermind, guys leave it in the comments of my videos, they say, how do we have threesomes? Like it's every, a lot of guys' goal to like have a threesome like before they die, right? And it is awesome, like there's like different things you can experience that you can't experience one-on-one. -on -one. For instance, uh, if you're getting a blowjob from one of the girls, you're making out with the other, right? And you have like tits in your face. You can't ever do that one on one. Like you can't physically have one girl giving you a blowjob and at the same time kissing you, right? Or like these girls, like they're like fighting over the dick, like <laughs> both like sucking the dick and the balls. And like yeah. we had like different fucking sauces and shit on my cock last night, which is really weird. Yeah. What is your sauce? Like this girl was like <laughs> at one point. It was awesome. We were like taking a break from fucking and like she's eating like um uh yeah, like yeah, we had like leftovers. We had a barbecue here before before this chick arrived, and there was a bunch of people here, and we had like leftover like meats, and like girls <laughs> like eating a couple of them with barbecue sauce, and then she, Jessica Rabbit, sprinkles some barbecue sauce on my cock, and then the chick, she's like, "Come here," like <laughs> like baiting like a yeah. a mouse with peanut butter. Uh, so they're fucking doing that, and then at a different point in the night, you guys were like eating chocolate off my dick. Yes. She had her mouth full of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> jumping in the technical details. Um, and we're both like a little fried because we were up like all night with this chick. Like sunrise came she, at, at like yeah. 7 or 7.30 in the morning. She's like, let's watch Netflix. And we were like, Jesus. Okay. Um, basically, she was just like going through pictures on her phone. Oh, yeah, but guys are always like, how do we have a threesome? Find a girl that's bisexual, okay, and you don't know usually in advance. So like after you bang a girl, like after the first time, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times I will. Uh, yeah, we're on this fucking tropical island here, various roosters. Uh, <laughs> I will say, um, are you bisexual or like I'm just curious. You don't want to like offend the girl or whatever or, or make her think that you're a player and you have all these girls ready. I'm just like, oh, I was just wondering. Like. A, I was just curious. Can you mention it? Ask her? Like yeah. So like, that's how we bang some of her friends. We've also brought girls some from clubs and from daytime spots. Um, but she showed me this picture of one of her friends and the girl was pretty hot. And she's like, yeah, that girl has a really nice big ass. She has like nice big firm tits. Like she's 23. And I was like, ask her like if she wants to like come have fun with us. So now the next piece is you don't want to like put too much pressure on the girl, right? You don't want to like set it all up in advance. like strictly so that there's all this like pressure and expectation so instead she's like hey like what did you say exactly i'm like with this american guy here's yeah, his picture her, he I thinks you're her, hot i asked her what she was up to and she said she wasn't doing anything now i just asked her to hang out send her your picture and told her that you liked her and that was it yeah yeah so she showed my picture told the girl that i met, that i like her etc and then asked her to come hang out um, so the girl ended up coming over, she was at the, came at like the tail end of our barbecue, um, which I was hosting. Oh, that's the fucking egg cart. 
That's what, <laughs> that's what they sell the organic eggs. It's apparently like three dollars for like thirty eggs, thirty organic eggs. Um, so like the girl shows up to town to the barbecue. Like I'm hosting the party here. Whatever that helped, I guess a little bit. But basically, you just kind of like chill back and let things let things happen. So like the people left. Um, and then it was just the three of us, and then it actually like took a while for like the girl to warm up, but she was like feeling very shy, etc. Um, but you want to walk through like <laughs> you started kissing her at some point. Yes, I kissed her, and you were standing next to us, I guess. And then you kissed her. Yeah. Really yeah, we were like taking turns kissing her and different things like that. Um, I personally thought like she was just like undressing me, like like I was like fully naked before this girl like had any clothes off. So it was like, I wouldn't have done it that way. But I like let her a lot of times lead. Like when we have these threesomes, if it's like a girl she knows or if it's like her that did like the majority of the pulling. But um, it's like this subtle thing. I remember back in the day, I think it was um, Thundercat who wrote like The Art of Approaching or something like that. And he had all the different openers. He talked about threesome game. And his whole point was always like, you don't want to not try at all to have a threesome with bisexual chicks you're already seeing. But you don't want to like try too much. Like it has to be like this like middle ground. So it's not like, okay, we have this chick here, like time to just go like balls to the wall. Like we kind of like had to like smooth her into things, like ease her into stuff. Her and I would be hooking up. Like she would be going down on me and the other girl would be like, you know, kind of just like <laughs> there, like Watching. like enjoying. Like it was, it was like this whole process. And finally, I don't remember what happened, but finally she starts like joining in. And then mm -hmm. it was just like. I undressed her. Yeah. Then it was just I like was kissing her and then her. Then it was like eight hours, like it had to have been, because this shit started around like twelve. We went to bed at like eight something, and it was just like, like someone would fucking bust, and then well me, the only person that's actually busting nuts. But like you guys were like orgasming, and then I'd come, and then we'd like fucking stop briefly, and then it would start up again, have some food, start up again, right? And then we had to like this girl wanted like cigarettes. Okay. At like 5 or 5.30 in the morning, she's like, I really just need a cigarette, blah, blah, blah. And I, neither of us smoke cigarettes. And there was this 24-hour convenience thing that we had to drop off. None of that's really relevant. But then we kind of like set frames that we're going to like see this girl a bunch more. Right, like in the morning, she cooked breakfast for the three of us. And the chick was like, um, <laughs> and it was funny too, because like her and I had just hooked up when the chick was in another room. And the chick comes back and is like, can we all hook up again? Um, but it's kind of like framed now that we can just like hit her up whenever. Like this chick was like, oh, do you like, you know, being with two girls at once? And I was like, yes, of course. <laughs> um, but what, what other like technical detail? Like I'll let you like do some talking about from like the woman's perspective. I mean, it's like very straightforward. Yeah, it's easy because I know her yeah. for a long time and I you know we have intimacy. So it was, it was easy for me, this one. Was, I yeah. felt way more comfortable. Yeah. And, and you kind of have to do like these like finesse texts like when we had the people over here for the barbecue I was like make sure you text her and like confirm so we're like okay like we can call an uber for you to let us know the address this and that and then she's like okay I'm getting ready and you're kind of like smoothing it along whereas with a different one of her friends the girl confirmed the day before and then like the day of like got cold feet and like just fucking never met up with us <laughs> Whatever. That, fucking, that fucking sound <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah Okay, but yeah, just kind of like putting this all together. Like, step one, like, find out if one of the girls you banged is bisexual. Step two, um, ask her if she has any friends that might be open to being bi. We haven't tried the joint Tinder thing yet. I think we're going to probably try it soon. Um, where we're probably showing like, pictures of our body, like, me shirtless and her, like, uh, in, like, underwear or some shit with our heads cut off. And that's how a lot of, like, that's, like, one of the best ways. Like, girls really are more interested and intrigued when it's, like, just this like sexy couple that where you can't see who they are and it's like this they want to know more and all this shit yeah but like for instance and I talked about this in my other video with her like when we did like the club polls it was basically just find a girl send her in she talks to the girl tells the girl she's pretty they end up getting into a makeout then she brings the girl over to me then, I, then she introduces me, right, and I'm already in because she is already in. And what kind of happens is the whole term in game with pre-selection is that she, like this girl, is an attractive girl who's approved of me. So it short circuits, it bypasses like the approval process by the new girl. She doesn't need to like make sure I'm cool or like 
make sure she's comfortable and safe and all this stuff because she's already done that. So it's like you get vouched for. So it's actually easier to pull a girl with another girl than by yourself. Um, like a best, like a good wing woman is like worth more than like a, like the best you know wing man. Um, let's see. Hello. Oh, and it, even like and it applies during the day. Okay, but in that situation with the night to wrap that up. The formula is basically she opens, she talks to the girl, she brings her over. Um, then we like we have this one venue where we are going to, and we have like this hookah. So now we're like, sitting with the girl in the hookah. Then we're like taking turns making out with the girl. Then we're doing like triple kissing, and then from there it's just logistics. Okay. Oh look, here we live like five minutes away. Um, let's go after this and like fucking have drinks. So like let's go after this and hang out, and then she, if she gives any objections, then. She would deal with them, or I would I would tell her how to deal with them if she didn't know. Um, one of the girls, it was funny because one of the times she came to me and she's like, the girl said she can't leave her friends. And that's like what you hear like 90% of the time, for those of you that don't, that don't know that. When you try to take a girl home to the nightclub, like 90% of the time, she's going to say, I can't leave my friends. Like I train guys in my live programs that you're going to say my pull script. Okay, and I'm not going to go over that here. That's in my, my paid stuff. You say the line to bring the girl home, 90% of the time, like, you're just like, okay, now you tell me you can't leave your friends. And then I have like the key optimized objection answer about leaving her friends. And it kind of like locks in the frame and then you just lead out. And if there's other obje objections, you answer those. Um, but we did this during the daytime as well. There was a girl sitting by herself that actually was there to see a guy that was working at the venue. And we just had her come sit at our table, you know, flirted, flirted, say we live nearby. She's like, oh, I, I should stay here because this guy, we're like we're just gonna go for a little bit and you come come back. And then we get here, and then she's kissing the girl and saying like, oh, me and my guy think you're hot, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so you can do this anywhere. You can do this during the day, you can do this at night. And girls kind of have this big advantage that they're come, kind of like swooping in under the radar. Like most objections come from the place of like, they're not sure if you're high value enough. They're not sure if you're safe. They're not sure if things are gonna become awkward or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, they're not sure if like, you know, they can trust you, all this stuff. But when a girl's involved, it like wipes all that stuff away. And then you can channel compliance through the girl. Okay, so like someone like myself, who's very good at objection handling and logistics, I can have the girl say that stuff. And I can even tell her what to text. And it, it means way more coming from the girl because they don't put up all the standard objections they would put up with a guy. So I think that covers a lot of the basics. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that's it. That's very easy for me last night. <laughs> because I know her for a long time. No, but it, what's cool with this what's cool with her is like she said it was like very easy for us to cover that girl. But she's like nailing like her close rate on the night game polls is hundred percent. I mean you're like going out to do game. Hmm. It's hundred percent and going out to do the day game is hundred percent. We have limited sample size. But that it is very promising because I haven't even like formally trained her on like I'm gonna have her go through my course and stuff like that. And she's down to like travel around and do this in other countries too. I mean, with home base being Brazil, of course. Um, anyways, is there anything else you wanted to? Oh, one other quick thing. Like I, I asked her yesterday. Like I've noticed a lot of mismatches in Florianopolis. I mean, like I see a lot of girls are like are an 8.5 to like 9.5 range, with a dude that's like a six, right? Like a dude that just looks oh, like nice. very beta. Yeah, it's like kind of like a loser. And I was like, what's the deal with that? I thought it was because the bell curve shifts because a lot of the chicks here are very hot, and I thought there was just such an abundance of hot chicks that that it lost its like appeal because it's like so common but she's saying like a lot of those chicks are just fucking like playing those guys yeah and usually, so, it's usually to get something out of them yeah you know something they want it can be anything from a cigarette or <laughs> money yeah i mean i haven't ran into like much gold digger shit here at all compared to like places like kiev ukraine where i lived that was like extremely like all the girls were trying to like um act like fucking sugar babies or act like just girls from tinder that's acting like that you owe them shit right okay. um and i talked to some locals there and i said it's because there was such an influx of sex tourism that the girls just kind of became like spoiled and like ruined um in colombia it's like i don't know they, they just all expect that i haven't ran into that too much here um but yeah that is an interesting fact about florianopolis uh one other thing i'll add on and before we end the video is one of my clients um, who got really good for my stuff. He's been following my stuff for a couple years. Um, he's over 100 lay count and he works online. His business is online. 
and we did a, a paid coaching call together and I like solved like there was like some like key little things missing from like his whole game plan that he didn't quite have ironed out and I fixed all those problems and he's like you know what dude he's like Latinas are my favorite he's like your stuff is like so ingenious I'm not just tuning my own horn like you He's like, I think this way, and he's like, you break everything down like extremely straightforward and easy to implement, and it's like, I can get the results right away, and like, it's, it's so awesome. And he's like, I'm also super passionate about this stuff. He's like, I just think about game and chicks all the time, right? And this dude's like, good looking dude, cool dude. Uh, and he's like, okay, I'm making the executive decision to just fucking move down there, and, we're, and we'll hang out. Like, I'll give him more training, et cetera. But I was like, cool, like, my two main wingmen here flew back to America and Canada. So like this guy's gonna come down and be my main wing, I'm gonna train him up. That's happened a bunch of times where I've had like a client that was around like 100 count or a little bit more that ends up becoming my main wing in a city. I get him really, really good. And then it's it's cool. Like we'll be able to fucking hit the clubs together when that, when that stuff reopens. The reason I bring it up is he's gonna be on a bunch of videos, I think. Um, He's gonna be, we're gonna take the camera to like, there's 42 beaches on the island, we're gonna take the camera, record a bunch of shit, and he has a, re a real solid understanding of the game as well, and it will become much better, quicker, uh, more quickly. But he will be here in about a week, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so we'll come on, I'm gonna have her do some, uh, like Alex from Playing With Fire, he said he just had a video explode and get over 100,000 views from showing uh, escalation techniques. So I'll make a video about that as well, where I show how to properly escalate on a girl and like the do's and don'ts of escalation, leading, like different physical moves that you can see in my infield and my products, but I can kind of like break down here in person with demonstrations, okay? Um, did you have anything else to add? Okay. I think I <laughs> Probably. Yeah, it's a lot easier with you wearing a mask on to fucking blur the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have like new editors that came on board. They're like waiting for me to dump footage, but I'm still like behind on a bunch of shit with that because I'm having threesomes till 8 a.m. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, hope this shed some light on how to get threesomes hooked up. And just one final note is you can approach a two set, which means two girls, and you can just run the same game plan to have a foursome as well. Okay, I've done that before. And typically like once your girl's making out with one of the girls, then you tell the other girl like, hey, like, don't let them have all the fun. Let's see who's the better kisser. Then they get into a triple makeout. And then you just come in, oh, I live nearby. Like, this is my girl. Let's go drink champagne, done. And it's like easier to pull like that foursome than if you had tried to just pull a girl one-on-one -on -one, um, from a club because your girl kind of like, uh, they call it a pivot <laughs> in formal game terms. And I think Mystery says like a good pivot is, is better than any wingman. But it's cool because like the worst case scenario, if you like strike out at the nightclub, like you still bang like the girl that you like that you were gonna bang anyways. So it's like insurance. <laughs> Everybody happy. <laughs> All right, so please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, please like and share. I am uh, interviewing Alex from Playing With Fire this week. Um, we're doing that tomorrow. I'll post it Friday or Saturday. And then the first roast is coming Sunday. So keep your eyes out for that stuff. Like and share if you found value. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not